When talking about the speed of light, scientists often like to slow it down to a speed that you and I can understand in our daily lives, something like the speed of a bicycle. So you might hear them say, if you were riding a bicycle at the speed of light and turned a flashlight on, that beam would still only be traveling at the speed of light. Another little fun quirk of light. But in 1999, scientists were able to do exactly that. A research team from Harvard led by Lenny Howe were able to shine a laser beam through a Bose-Einstein condensate and were able to slow that speed down to 17 meters per second. In later experiments, they were able to make it stop altogether. This, of course, requires extreme conditions. In a vacuum, the speed of light is a constant 186,000 miles per second. Now, that's blazing fast to us, but in the scale of the cosmos, that's a snail's pace. So why so slow? And why only this speed? Mark Lott asked, why is the speed of light so slow? This was yet another question that was asked in my lightning round video that was just way too complicated for the lightning round video, so it got a video. For those who've been following the channel, yes, I'm trying to get caught up on those. So before I jump into the explanation, I wanna point you to one of my favorite videos ever. It's called Writing Light, and it shows basically what it would be like if you were traveling away from the sun at the speed of light. And the thing about it that's so awesome is, it's a really long video. It's 45 minutes long, and that just gets you to Jupiter. The filmmakers are like, oh God, there's three more planets. Eh, we've made our point. Three planets, by the way, that are twice as far from each other as Jupiter is from the sun. Seriously, the solar system is ridiculous. So when we talk about the speed of light, the first thing that we need to remember is that light is just a small sliver of the electromagnetic spectrum, going from gamma rays all the way down to radio waves. So we're really talking about the speed of electromagnetism. James Clerk Maxwell was the genius who was able to first transcribe electromagnetic properties into physics equations. And from these equations, we're able to calculate the speed of light at 299,792 kilometers per second. Boom. But it takes 45 minutes to get to Jupiter. Come on, man, can we go any faster? No, it can't. Why not? Because Einstein said so. Aww. Hey, you stop your whining, I'm turning this beam of light around and we're going right back home. Einstein was able to prove through his special theory of relativity that the closer you get to the speed of light, the more time slows down for an object in that reference frame. And if you get to the speed of light, time stops completely. So if you were able to go faster than light through space time, time would actually flip and run backwards. And that would break causality. Effect would precede cause. The speed of light is the speed of causality. So if all that sounds too simple for you, I'm putting a couple of videos down in the description below from PBS Space Time where they talk about the Lorenz transformation, which is a mathematical construct that rectifies different frames in both velocity and time at relativistic speeds. And I'm warning you now, bring a bucket to capture all the brain matter that's gonna ooze out of your ear because you're gonna need it. Causality, by the way, is the reason why they use the letter C to describe the speed of light in equations. That's not true, it's actually from the Latin word for speed, celeritas, but man, that would've been awesome, right? The other prediction that supports a speed limit is the fact that inertia increases as velocity approaches the speed of light. That means mass increases. So mass is a speed impediment. Nothing with mass can reach the speed of light. But if you are massless, you can only go the speed of light because there's no mass to impede your speed. And photons are massless particles. Particles that must travel at the speed of light, and since they are traveling at the speed of light, for them, time stands still. So really, that video that I talked about earlier is all wrong, because if you were really traveling away from the sun at the speed of light, it would all happen in an instant. So when you look up at a star at night, the light hitting your eyeball may have taken a million years to reach you, but to the photon, that experience was instantaneous. It was like, born your eyeball. I always kind of laugh a little bit whenever I see people laying out on a beach because I think the photons that are hitting their butt, their entire experience of existence was literally like, born ass. Now there is another theory that's a little controversial, but it's starting to gain some ground. It says that the speed of light is actually hampered by quantum vacuum fluctuations. See, quantum field theory says that empty space is not actually empty at all. It's actually filled with virtual particles popping in and out of existence. And two different teams of researchers have calculated C using electromagnetic particles in the quantum vacuum. So it could be that quantum fluctuations are actually slowing down the speed of light. But just to be hypothetical here, what if the speed of light wasn't the speed of light? What if Galileo was right and the speed of light is infinite? Well, then nothing would exist 
because matter is made out of energy, therefore it would take infinite energy to make any matter. Time and space wouldn't exist because all things communicate with each other instantly. It would always be a forever here and now. But if the speed of light were slower, that might actually be even cooler because we would be able to see all the way back to the Big Bang. The speed of light, of course, is just one of many constants in the universe, like gravity, the specific charges and weights of the different fundamental particles, and so on and so forth. A whole handful of specific constants that if they weren't there, we wouldn't exist. Thanks for watching. If this is your first time here and you like this video at all, hit the subscribe button because I come back with stuff just like this every Monday. Like, share, and subscribe. And as always, a big thanks to The Answer Files supporting this channel on Patreon. I couldn't do it without you. If you would like to be a part of the Patreon community and get special perks, you can go to patreon.com slash answerswithjoe. And as always, you guys go out and have an eye-opening week, and I will see you next Monday. Love you guys. Take care.